every horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Betty Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. When boys line up to run a race, galloping garden sets the pace. He comes in first because he knows he's got gold power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got gold power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. And so will you once you're eating Cheerios every breakfast. You'll say the Cheerios taste simply wonderful, too. They're already cooked, shaped like little round O's, and just full of good toasted oat flavor. Pour out a big bowlful, add fresh milk, and pitch in. You can almost feel the go power. For a Cheerios breakfast is one of the finest ways you can get the vitamins, proteins, and minerals your body needs. A bowl of Cheerios and milk really starts your day right. Helps give you the good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. Go power. You'll get it from Cheerios. Try it, and folks will say... He's feeling his Cheerios. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, because I am Silver. Hooray! Dan Reed, young nephew of the Lone Ranger, while spending his summer vacation with a masked man and Tonto, had gone to a certain mission to pay his respects to the Padre, an old friend. One afternoon, he returned to the camp near the town of Rock Hill in southern Texas. Oh, oh, Victor, oh, oh, steady, boy. Hello, Dan. Did you enjoy your visit? Yes, sir. Padre sent his regards to you and Tano. I hope he's in good health. Oh, he's fine. He, he sent this letter. Well, thanks. Hmm. It's addressed to me, care of the mission. That's right, sir. The Padre said it arrived by courier a few hours before I got there. That's why I shortened my visit and came back. I, I thought it must be important. I'll soon find out. Hello, Dan. Hello, Tano. Not stay long at mission. No, Tano. I brought a letter to the Lone Ranger. Tano, this is from the governor at Austin. It's marked confidential, so I can't tell you about it. Something urgent has come up, and the governor requests that I go to Austin at once. Uh, we ride with you, Kima Sunday? No. He writes that others may suspect he sent for me, and that there's danger of my being intercepted. And what we do... Stay here in this camp for the next two days. It's 30 miles to Austin from here. Yes, I know. Now, as I said, wait here two days. Then you and Dan meet me in the large stand of cottonwoods just north of San Antonio. Come on, Silver! That afternoon in a farmhouse located between Rock Hill and the state capital of Austin, a man known as Captain Parlin, who had been discharged for disloyalty both from the Army and as military aid to the governor, paced the floor as he talked to a few of his renegade followers. My plans have been carefully made, and we'll go into action day after tomorrow. No one suspects that this cotton plantation is a cover-up. The field workers out there are men that Carlos has brought in from across the border. Si, senor capitan. You will find them good fighters, even though they do not do so well as cotton pickers. I have been careful to pick hombres who deserted from the Mexican army. And along with them, we have the trained men who have seen fit to, let us say, denounce the United States Army. Yeah, men watching the trail between Austin and San Antonio have made sure no couriers got through to the army post there, Captain. You've done a good job, Buck, and you won't be sorry. In three days, I hope to take over the governorship of this state lock, stock, and barrel. 
You'll all be well rewarded for your part. We have just 200 men. What about the United States Army? The largest concentration of troops is at the Army post at San Antonio. 400 cavalrymen. I've learned from one of their couriers who secretly joined our cause that 300 of them are leaving tomorrow for Fort Stockton. Somebody coming. Must be Frank Niles, one of our men who's been working for the governor. Hello, Frank. Hello, Captain. What's up, Frank? The governor called in his military aide this morning and told me to leave his office. I listened outside the door, which I left slightly open. What did you hear? I heard him say he suspected treachery because no couriers have gone through to the fort. He said he sent a letter in a plain envelope by stage mail asking for the help of a masked man known as the Lone Ranger. Yes, I've heard of him. He's dangerous to our cause. We must stop him. Yes, right. Here you go, go Carlos, hmm? take one or two men with you and watch the trail. I've heard the governor talk about him. He rides a white stallion and wears a mask. It's up to you to see that he doesn't reach off. The following morning, Tonto went to town several miles away, leaving Dan in camp. It was mid-morning when Dan heard fast hoofbeats approaching. Silver with an empty saddle. Oh, Silver, hold on, hold on. Something's happened to the Lone Ranger. I wish Tonto were here. He won't be back for some time. If the Lone Ranger is lying hurt somewhere, oh, I have to do something right away. Panic-stricken by the return of Silver without the Lone Ranger, Dan thought only of finding the masked man as soon as possible. He made a quick decision to leave Silver tied in camp with a note attached to the saddle. I can follow Silver's tracks and find the Lone Ranger. Then Tano will follow me and bring Silver. I'll leave right now. Easy, Victor. Steady. Come on, Victor. An hour after Dan Reed left camp to search for the Lone Ranger, Tonto returned and found Dan's note saying that he was going to find the Lone Ranger. Dan, forget what Lone Ranger say. Maybe Dan right into danger. The loyal Indian, close, trusted friend of the Lone Ranger, had never questioned nor disobeyed directions given by the masked man. Now he was torn between the impulse to follow Dan, who might be going into danger, and the strong desire to carry out his promise to the Lone Ranger. The directions had been to stay in camp for two days, then meet the masked man outside of San Antonio. Dan, not a day, Lone Ranger. Him get worried when Silver come back alone. It's time to leave for San Antonio. <laughs> Scout, we take Silver. Go where Lone Ranger say. Reluctantly, Toto untied Silver, then mounted his horse, Scout. Easy, Scout. Easy, Bob. Dan, young man now. We hope him not get into trouble. Dan, no way to meet in place. Get him up, Scout. Come on, Silver. Meantime, Dan Reed followed the tracks left by Silver when the great horse returned to the camp. Many miles from the camp, the trail Dan was following joined the main trail between San Antonio and Austin. Finally, as he approached a thicket, three horsemen rode out and barred his way. Up and Reed! Ho, ho, Victor, ho, ho, ho! Hey, Where are you going, amigo? Toward Austin. Hey, Carlos. That's the kind of horse the masked man rides a white stallion. You've seen him? You know where he is? So you know the masked man, eh, senor? Yes, sir. Dan stopped. He suddenly realized by the expression on Carlos's face that he was saying too much. Carlos spoke. I am glad to learn you know him. Where is he? Speak up, quick. I don't know. Huh? Buck, take him to the capitan. I'm sure he can tell plenty. If he tries to get away, shoot him. He won't get away. All right, you ride ahead of me. I'll tell you which way to go, and I'll... Go on. Come on, Victor. Get up. Get up. Buck, holding a gun, directed Dan to the farmhouse in the hills. There, Captain Parlin questioned him at length. Then said... When I was the governor's aide, he spoke a great deal about the Lone Ranger... And I remember him saying there was an Indian and a youth who were the masked man's close friends. 
This must be the young man he met. Uh, maybe so, but what about it? Try him, gag him. Put him in one of the back rooms. We'll hold him as hostage in case the masked man escapes Carlos. <laughs> then we may decide not to interfere to save this young man's life. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Say, I'll bet everyone in your gang loves a chocolate malt, right? Who doesn't? Well, here's a real treat you can plan. Sometime soon, invite the gang over for a chocolate malt, and then surprise them with a Betty Crocker chocolate malt cake mix cake. Imagine all the excitement when they taste their favorite flavor in a cake. A big, delicious, I think you're the best gang in the world kind of cake. You see, Betty Crocker has put real malted milk right in the mix. It's the first chocolate malt cake mix ever. And it's so easy, Mom will have fun baking it. Or you can bake one yourself. Just add water and two fresh eggs. That's all. For a perfect cake every time you bake. Cake after cake after cake. It's guaranteed perfect by Betty Crocker of General Mills, Minneapolis. Bake up Betty Crocker's chocolate malt cake mix soon. It's the newest taste in cake. In Austin, the governor looked up as his aide entered. Yes, what is it, Norris? There's someone in the anteroom room who insists upon seeing you, sir. Who is he? An old man, governor. He insists it's important. When I told him that you were busy in the state of business, he handed me this. Yeah. A silver bullet. Yes, must be some kind of threat. Threw huh? that man in at once. Yes, sir. The governor will see you. Afternoon, Governor. This here fellow tried to keep me from seeing you. <laughs> yeah, no, wait outside. Yes, sir. <laughs> I see my disguise is effective. I certainly wouldn't have suspected that we wish an old codger like you to actually be the Lone Ranger. I knew you'd know by the bullet who was waiting. Yes. Uh, do sit down. Oh, thank you, sir. I left late yesterday afternoon as soon as I received your letter. By the time I reached the main trail, darkness had fallen. The sky was cloudy, so there was no moonlight. Because of the information about the two missing couriers, I decided to camp for the night, assume a disguise, then take the morning stage from there to Austin. And uh, what about your horse? I turned him loose. Because of your warning, I realized someone might be watching and recognize him, even though I was disguised. I'm uh, sure he went back to camp. It was a clever way to get here without detection. I wanted to pass along the main trail by daylight to look things over. Did you find out anything? Yes, sir. After I sent Silver back to camp, the stage came along and I hailed it. Several miles back along the trail, three men waved down the stage. Morning, senor. Morning. What's this all about? Now, if you're outlaws, you won't get anything much from me. We are not after your dinero, old one. I was hoping there might be another passenger. You have not seen a masked man on the trail, eh? Nope. What's more, I don't hanker to see one either. Just going to Austin to visit a friend. Need all my cash to go back. You keep the cash. We don't want it. Ho, ho, there, ho. Hey, Carlos. You're wasting time talking to that old codger. The captain's not interested in hombres like him. Let's go. All right. Adios. Get up! Get up! Get up! They rode away, Governor, and the stage came on to Austin. What do you make of it? They were looking for me, I believe. I recognize the Mexican Carlos from handbills I've seen. He's a deserter from the Mexican army. And at one time tried to lead a revolt against the Mexican state of Chihuahua. That is news. 
after we left them, I noticed far more workers in the cotton field than a planter would need, and I could see they were not used to the work. Yes. Then you think... I think Carlos and the others are planning something big, Governor. The fact that they've cut off your communications with the post at San Antonio is serious. But what can be done? What do you suggest? I'll uh, take the afternoon stage back to San Antonio. If they stop us again, I'll say my friend here was away, so I decided to return home. I'm sure I'll not have trouble getting through. Uh And uh, then? I gave Toto directions to meet me there in the morning with my horse. I'll tell the post commandant what I think, and uh, suggest you send a note requesting the troops to come here to Austin to prevent trouble. I'll write the note at once, sir, and rely on you to get it to Major Rector. still in disguise, took the afternoon stage, carrying the message from the governor to the major at the army post in San Antonio. He arrived without mishap that night, and after removing his disguise and again wearing his mask, went to the post where he was known and received by the commandant. After plans were made to take the cavalry to Austin the following morning, the masked man walked to the Cottonwood Grove, where he found Tonto waiting. Tonto! Where's Dan? He must have it. Dan get upset when Silver come back without Ryder. Me not there. Him leave this note. Oh. Kneeling by the campfire, the masked man quickly read the note Dan had left for Tonto. Then he spoke. I'm sure Dan rode into trouble. Too bad he didn't follow my instructions. And what we do? Go find him, of course. I'll stop and notify the major we're riding on ahead. Good boy, Silver. Good boy. Too bad you couldn't talk and tell Dan what happened. You not say what happened. I'll tell you as we ride. All right, let's go. Easy. Come on, Silver. Come That night, the moon was bright. After talking again to the Major, the Lone Ranger rode with Tonto toward the place where Carlos and his two cronies had stopped the stage. A faint flush of dawn was in the sky when they cautiously approached, then pulled to one side into the thick woods. Bulls of the road. Easy, Easy, Scotty. Easy, Scotty. Easy, Scotty. Toto, we were stopped before, right around the bend ahead. Now, me go through wood. See if them watch trail now. Toto moved like a shadow through the woods. He saw a man near the trail sitting on a log with a rifle across his knees. Toto silently crept up behind him. Suddenly, the Indian's arm encircled the man's neck from behind. You keep quiet. I'm unconscious now. Time. Soon, Tonto rejoined the Lone Ranger, and the two men rode to the spot where the guard had been stationed. Move, move, fella. Tonto, there are hoof marks going back into the hills from here. We'll follow them and see where they lead us. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. From a wooded ridge, the two men finally saw the farmhouse. Leaving the horses hidden among the trees, they made their way warily through the thick brush to the back of the house. In one of the back rooms, Dan Reed, still tied and gagged, lay unguarded on a cot. Suddenly, his attention was drawn to the window which moved slowly and quietly upward. Dan, there he is, Toto. <laughs> Quickly, the masked man removed the gag. <laughs> then untied Dan. There. <laughs> Thanks. I thought you'd Don't never... talk. Let's get out of here. Still hidden by the brush, the two men and Dan reached the ridge. Dan told of the plans he had overheard, then said, I, I can't leave Victor. You ride with me now, Dan. We'll get Victor for you later. I'm very much surprised that you disobeyed my instructions, Dan. In spite of the concern he must have felt, Tonto carried them out to the letter. I'm sorry. Promise me that never again will you ignore any instructions I may give you. I promise, sir. Good enough. Tonto, we'll ride to meet the cavalry. We'll leave Dan in a safe place until the excitement is over. The Major and his men will...
will take these renegades by surprise. All right, let's go. Come on, Scout. Come on, Scout. Come on, Scout. Come on, Scout. Come on, Come on, Scout. Come on, Scout. Shortly after Dan's rescue, Captain Parlin entered the main room of the farmhouse, where Carlos and a few of the men were waiting. Well, men, today is the day. Carlos, get all the men together and ready to ride. Well, what about the mass man? He didn't show up, and we still hold the owner over. We'll take that young man with us, tied to his horse. Uh-huh. And if that mass man appears, I'll threaten to kill the young man unless he... Hey, ha- Captain! One of the men saw some cavalry riding through the field. Why are you doing that? Come on, you men! Why are you we're already attacking. We assemble our forces. Come on. The captain, Carlos, and Buck rushed out to lead the fight. But their surprise was complete when they saw cavalry moving in from every side. Adam, men! The battle raged for some time, and many cavalrymen as well as renegades fell. Finally outnumbered and fighting against well-trained soldiers, the renegades surrendered. The battle was over. After the battle, Dan's horse, Victor, was found unharmed. When he was ready to leave with the Lone Ranger and Tonto, the Major spoke to the masked man. Sir, but for you, that traitor, former Captain Parlin, might have succeeded. I'm very glad we could help, Major. I'm sure the Governor will want to see you and thank you in person. We'll ride to Austin now and report to the Governor. I'm sure you know how to take care of those traitors. You may rest assured of that, my friend. Adios, Major. Adios, mister. Let's go, Tonto Dan. Come on, Silver. Come on, Scout. Come on, Victor. There goes one of the finest Americans I've ever known. I don't believe anyone loves his country more or has greater hatred for traitors than the Lone Ranger. Adios, Special recording Mondays through Fridays.